It's a little known secret of the Massachusetts court system, and it's letting tens of thousands of people accused of criminal acts off the hook and off the books. But now the Globe Spotlight team is shining a light on all of it with their multi-part investigation into these so-called show cause hearings. As they tell it, these are private meetings held by clerk magistrates to decide whether there's enough evidence to issue charges for a crime. To be clear, about 40% of the magistrates making these decisions do not have a law degree. At least one didn't go to college at all. And yet this group has the power to completely wipe away any trace of a criminal complaint with no official record at all. Like the case of a judge who was caught on camera taking someone else's $4,000 watch off a security belt at the airport. Or the Quincy cab driver accused of running over and dragging an elderly man, ultimately killing him. And more recently, actor Kevin Spacey's lawyers tried to use the same system to wipe away the felony sexual assault accusations against him. That case, as you know, did move forward, but had it not, would we have even ever known about it? Asked about this system shortly after the Globe story came out, the state's top politicians indicated they have some concerns. I think it's a little bit early to be making a judgment one way or the other, but I think it's worthy of us taking a look at. I think that we need a transparency in our judicial hearings. There should be, as there is for stuff that gets diverted through the traditional court system, um, a record of some kind to create the transparency that there should be when we deal with this sort of thing. I'm joined now by two of the Globe journalists bringing the system to light, Nicole Dunka and Todd Wallach. Nicole, it's great to meet you, and Todd, it's great to see you. So what did I leave out? Tell me, how, does, how do these show cause things differ from what most normal people consider a court to be? So across the country, when you're talking about a criminal case, it's in an open court. That's a cornerstone of the justice system. Once it hits an arraignment, you and I can go into the courtroom and observe what's going on, and there will be a public record. Um, but for these particular hearings, it's something else completely different. This is a pre-arraignment um, kind of system where sometimes these hearings are they're held in these private conference rooms. There's barely ever any public notice, and nobody else can go in there. Sometimes victims of crimes aren't even able to and go in there. And is a record there. kept of any of these things or no? It's not open to the public. So in addition, if you're a poor defendant in an open criminal trial, for example, you're entitled to assign counsel if you can't afford it. Are you entitled to counsel in these kinds of things? Yeah, you're not. And we think of that as one of the cornerstones of our criminal justice system. It, you're appointed a lawyer, but not for these. And that makes a huge difference. I talk to attorneys who say that they're successful in making these cases disappear more than 90% of the time versus overall it's, it's half the time. You know, can we, I, I just gave a couple of the cases. That first judge I should name was Patricia Ch uh, Curtin, who has since uh, uh, left office. Jared Remy, we all know, and I think it was in 2013 that Jared Remy was uh, convicted of killing his girlfriend. Thirteen years earlier, earlier, he had one of these show cause hearings. What happened at that hearing? So actually what happened there is it was that he was going to go to an arraignment, so that was going to be in a public court. But he was able to get into a secret hearing. By, and so in that way, he was able to go this hearing and the charges that, were go that could have been issued against him just never came to For life. threatening to kill a girlfriend, mm -hmm. which is exactly what he did 13 years later. Also, and, when, and when I went to the court, they had no record at all of that case. It just sort of disappeared. And uh, to a couple of Boston cops. We've been reading in your paper nonstop about state cops who are stealing overtime money, essentially. Some indicted, some retiring, this sort of thing. A couple of Boston cops a little bit luckier, yes? What happened to them? Absolutely. So in this case, there were a couple Boston police accused of stealing similar amounts of money in overtime as the state troopers we've all heard about. Uh, but they went through this... Uh, this process. In one case, the charges almost disappeared. A clerk said he didn't think that there was enough evidence because the police officer showed up at the hearing and offered to pay back the money that he allegedly stole. In, in another case, uh, charges had issued. It was supposed to be a public crime. The, uh, the person was supposed to be arraigned, uh, but he wound up getting the case diverted to a closed hearing where the case disappeared and he was never, uh, he was never publicly arraigned on it. One more example before we get to step back from this for a second. You also uh, co-wrote a piece about how in some people are using this to basically go against their accuser. Explain what that story is about. 
So with these kinds of with these kinds of hearings that are private, you can actually go to a court and without any police backing say I want to accuse so and so of an assault or some sort of crime. So what we have actually been talking about with some domestic violence experts and other um, attorneys that represent some victims, there are some alleged abusers who will actually use these secret hearings as a way to intimidate some of their intimidate victims to kind of to drop their charges or to convince them to say that even they, though the police in that case right, might not exactly. have brought a charge yes. on behalf of that person. You know, it, w in all fairness, and I, I guess we have to be fair here, even though I don't get the other side of this at all, Todd, I have to say, the argument is what there is. Some, a lot of these disputes are neighborly, even though the ones we've talked about are far from neighborly. They're minor things. It's a diversionary program. Is there another argument in favor of these things being kept? Sure. I think there are a lot of people who argue maybe there should be some sort of system to screen out uh, minor complaints or cases involving first offenders that maybe don't need to go through the full criminal justice system. Uh, but the critics will say you don't need to do that in secret hearings where the files are secret and nobody can see what happens. Well, can one other critic add to that? Yeah. From having read your stuff, in 49 other states, they're able to do it in public settings, according to your reporting. So it can be, if it can be done there, why can't it be done here? By the way, the, uh, I mentioned the fairly muted response from elected officials, which I have to say shocked me. Here's Maura Healy, the Attorney General, was here a couple of weeks ago, and here's part of what she had to say about the same thing. The public may not understand that there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these proceedings around the state every day. Yeah. And so there's a role for uh, a, a person who's actually not a judge but is a clerk magistrate who's been vetted and appointed and, and confirmed to carry out certain functions. Is there a place for greater transparency and certainly the recording of information? Absolutely. You know, again, I, has there been one high-ranking public official who has said, based on your reporting, we have to get rid of the, the system, we have to be like the other 49 states, do this in public, with a record, with notice, with normal rules of engagement? Has anybody said this? No. What the, what the court system has said is the, the stories raised a lot of serious issues uh, that we take seriously and we formed a working group to look at how it can be overhauled. Nobody's called for getting rid of it and we're waiting to see what the officials will do to follow up on their promises of more transparency. You know, one, one uh, uh, last thing here, Nicole, is people are probably sitting at home saying, well, this is a secret court. How'd you get the information? You sort of went through the back door through the police, who are the ones who have to request these hearings, yes? Right. That was one of the ways that we got a lot of the police reports. We tried to go to the court, obviously, and tried to get some of these files, and they wouldn't give it to us. So we went to the police officers and the police departments that sent these hearing, sent these crimes to these hearings. And kind of, we went to courthouses all over the state to basically see which ones ended up which ones ended up having charges issued and which ones didn't. You know, one last thing. I, I mentioned that uh, in your reporting I learned that we're the only state out of 50. In your reporting, I also learned we're the only state out of 50 where the judiciary, the legislature, and the governor claim to be exempt from public record laws. Now, as bad as that is to me, the good news is I know there's a legislative commission, and I'm sure they're going to address this. Are they not? Yeah, ab absolutely. So in tw uh, two years ago when the state overhauled uh, the laws and re reduced some fees and did some other things, they realized that there was an issue where so many of our records and agencies are exempt, and they set up a special commission to look at this. And After two years, the commission decided they couldn't come to any agreements, didn't reach any, didn't even put out a report, and then dissolved itself. Perfect. I think that says it all. Todd, wonderful reporting as always. Thank really you. important, Nicole, as well. Thank Thanks. you so much for what you're doing. Appreciate it.